Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, so it's been a while since my last one, um, been quite busy, but today I should have two there that might be going out. Um, one, this one that you can see uh, for the Vibe subwoofer, uh, another one for the indicators, but that'll come. Um, so I used to have a Alpine SWE 815 if I remember that right. Um, that was a big subwoofer that went in the back of the car, um, a, a previous DS3 that I had, whereas now, because I've got the Cabrio, the boot's really small, uh, so I needed something a little bit more compact. So I've gone for this under seat one. Do your own research, figure out whatever um, you know works best for you, but that's what I'm choosing. Uh, it should be pretty much standard across the board of you know what's put in. Uh, I'll do like a little review at the end just to see you know if it was worth the money and if it was worth the hassle of installing it and everything. Um, but yeah, so I'll do a little run through how to do it, um, and hopefully it's as simple as this little booklet makes it look. So first off, before I even start anything anywhere. Uh, this is what I'm going from, uh, obviously it's the instruction booklet uh, for this. Um, I've already plugged this in just to see what it looks like and where it's going to root and how long the cables look. Um, so you've got the blue one here, this one is going to be your ignition wire, so this will turn on uh, with the speaker, uh, with the radio and everything when it turns on and turn off as well so you don't flat your battery. Uh, then you've got these ones here, uh, you've got white ones and grey ones. Uh, the grey one is to, uh, let's have a look. The grey one is to the left hand side, uh, so that'll be your passenger side, and the white one will be to your driver side. Um, now just for ease of things I'm going to route this into the rear speakers, uh, just because, let me show you, uh, with the, uh, the front door cards, uh, obviously all the cabling and everything goes through here and into that side, so you have to take out all this trim and all that sort of thing to get to it. Um, and I don't feel like doing that today. Uh, so it's going to be in the rear speakers. As you can see, I've already got this one out, but I'll show you on the other side how to do that now. So just before showing you that, I may as well finish off explaining the rest. Um, so the yellow one is your power wire. Um, so that one's going to go to the battery. Somehow, at some point, haven't figured it out just yet. I'll get there when I get there. Um, and then you're going to put the black wire, um, which has this little tab on the end. That's your grounding wire. Um, so you'll find some body part of the vehicle to, um, to ground it. And then that's it, really. I mean, uh, I don't have an extra, extra amplifier. Uh, but you do have the, um, let me uh, pick this up, there we go. You do have these extra cables uh, that you can plug into an amplifier if you have one or if you buy one. Uh, that's just a, an optional extra. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'll see how it sounds first and possibly add that later on. So now we're in the back. Um, I'll show you how I got this one out. As you can see, I've already upgraded these speakers in the, uh, the past. Um, but um, I've also added some of these sort of sound deadening things just to sort of try and reduce the amount of rattles in the car because it is French after all. Um, but if you pull this tab down, I mean this is why I'm going for an under seat subwoofer, you can see the boot is not very big in these, um, but you need to get off this plastic trim. So um, it's just clips from behind. Um, and it goes all the way along there and just down here like this. Um, so you don't need to actually take the seats out. Um, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Just grab it the side. There we go. Um, also, I have a spare set of clips. If you don't, please be more careful because the clips break fairly easily. Um, and you don't want to have to put it all back again um, with broken clips because that's when you end up with more rattles and all the rest of it. And especially if you're fitting a subwoofer, there's going to be even more rattles. So that's definitely not what you want. So I'll cut back again when this is off. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll sort of show you that it looks exactly the same underneath. There we go. So after pulling that off, you can actually see that only a couple of these clips came with it. Uh, the rest are kind of stuck in there still. So I'm going to use a pair of long nose pliers to uh, try and get those out um, and then we can get started. So cutting ahead a little bit, this only took me a few minutes, uh, but what I've done is grab the, the white and grey cable here. I've unplugged that so that's separate. Uh, the subwoofer is going down in this um, 
this little footwell uh, just underneath the passenger seat. Um, so I've now routed the cables so that they are a little bit neater going out of the way. So I've took the grey one, obviously, because that's going to the left-hand side. Um, that's gone underneath here, up through here, down around there. Uh, it's then tucked just down here, um, and then it goes behind this um, white kind of like fabric. Um, or polystyrene um, and then obviously because I've taken the speaker out um, you will need to drill this speaker out uh, because it will have rivets um, but because I've already drilled it out uh, previously uh, it's just screwed in right now um, but yeah you'll need to drill them out but it's no big deal um, just you know get either some screws or rivets or something like that to, uh, to fix them back in place again afterwards uh, and you'll be fine Okay, so I'm just putting this video together and I've just realized that I may have made a mistake. Uh, you don't have to drill out those rivets uh, of the speaker. What you can actually do is go behind the, uh, the polystyrene sort of like cover uh, on the side of the wall. Um, and yeah, if you unclip the wire from behind, like you can just sort of like reach your hand in, uh, unclip the wire uh, and bring the wire more towards the polystyrene like hole, like you can just pull that down uh, and bring the wire out that way then you can do all the rest of the splicing that's about to come next um, that way instead and you don't have to draw anything out it makes it easier for you if you're replacing them both at the same time you know you're doing the rear speakers and the subwoofer by all means do it both together because you'll get a neater result but yeah just to save you from drilling anything that's the answer so as you can see i put some sound deadening and stuff behind there too um, but yeah so now what we're going to need to do uh, is splice into this one here um, or probably for me it might be easier to splice into this one um, and just get yourself the end of this cable you obviously split this um, and you have one going to uh, to one cable and one going to the other so to, gonna cut in just whilst I'm giving this a test so I've got the white and grey uh, leads plugged in that'll be for the left and the right um, and now because I've run it all the way up there I've just got it plugged into the uh, the right and left uh, of the positive and negative uh, of the speaker uh, just to give it a test just to see if it works uh, obviously going to run the yellow cable uh, just as a test up to the battery um, and uh, yeah hopefully we'll, uh, we'll figure out how it works so I'm not actually quite sure where I left off uh, I got carried away um, it was more of a, a trial sort of thing uh, so this side is all wired up now uh, but I'm going to actually show you what I did on this side. Um, first of all, I gave it a test, which I would say is just do it. It's, it's going to save you a lot of a headache. Just in case you put it all through, you make it all neat, uh, you route all the wires, you, you, and then you find out it doesn't work. You're going to you're going to be a little bit miserable, I think. Um, so, as I mentioned, I got this wire through here. I'm going to actually thread it behind here and bring it out. Uh, here because that way when you put the speaker in all the cables are neat as is this one So as I mentioned this one um, is the aftermarket uh, speaker that I've got. I've just got Alpine S uh, S65s um, They're good. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of bass uh, Which is why I'm adding the, um, the under seat sub um, The front speakers I believe I've got pioneers um, But I can leave a link in the description or whatever for, for those um, as long as it all sounds good. I don't want to be recommending uh, stuff that doesn't mesh well together. Uh, but anyway, uh, with this, my intention is to cut these wires here, splice them, um, and then I will have a, I've got, I think they're called spade connectors. Uh, these ones here. Uh, so I was using these ones. So that this way I can unplug and plug them in again when I want to in the future without having to cut the original wiring harness. Uh, you don't need these, I would just recommend them I guess. Um, I've got a set of crimps uh, to obviously crimp over the wires um, and your wire cutters, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'll turn this around now and show you what I do. So that's come through and I have a lot more spare cable than I actually thought I would. Uh, so I'm going to give myself plenty of slack, I'm going to cut it around here um, and then maybe wrap this up with some foam tape or something so it doesn't rattle around inside. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to crimp this here, split these wires, and then get the uh, the connectors on. So it might look a little bit messy, but this is what it's like. Um, so this white cable that you have, uh, obviously the same on the grey cable, you have a black line on one of them. So that'll be uh, the black one, I believe, uh, is to the negative. 
Um, so the black wire is your negative, and the uh, the white one is your positive. Uh, so this is a bit fiddly with one hand, but I'm going to put these two together, twist the cables together, um, and then put another um, mail connector on the end of there. And then on these ones, I'm just going to strip the wires the same as I have here, um, and then put the uh, the female connector on. Uh, these two will connect together, uh, and then obviously this will connect into the car wiring. Um, and then the end of these plugs will go on the end of there like that. There we go, so that's how that one will look. Obviously once you've stripped it and twisted the cable, uh, that's when you put the, uh, the next connector on. Uh, and then this one is ready to go on there. Oh my hand's all shaky, left-handed. That goes on there just like that. I'm going to squeeze this a little bit tighter because it's a little bit loose and um, just so it doesn't fall off when it's installed into the car um, but then yeah exactly the same with the other side and then we're good to go and put it back so those are on nice and tight now uh, and the cables wrapped uh, in some uh, some velcro or well the soft velcro side uh, so it doesn't rattle uh, i'll screw this back in and we'll get on to the next step okay so as you can see the sun's setting a little bit in the background so i'm running out of light um, but I'm pretty much almost there now, uh, so I've cut ahead again. So I've got everything underneath the uh, the seat now, all plugged in um, and rooted. Uh, there is one more thing that I need to show you that, again, I've skipped ahead for, uh, but I was just trying to figure it out whilst I went along. Bring the seat forward. Right, so that's the subwoofer, obviously underneath the seat. Uh, because I've got these big bucket seats, uh, annoyingly, it won't slide all the way back, but I'm sure yours will. If not, you can just route it to the boot, you can route it to the back of the chairs, whatever you want to do. I'm just putting mine a little bit further back than underneath the seat. Uh, however, actually I'll flip this round. So I've routed the earth cable uh, here, or the ground cable rather. Uh, so that plugs in uh, to the normal cable set. Um, I'm going to tuck all this in neatly and make it all um, a bit more, uh, well, neat. Um, and then this is where I've got the ground cable so that uh, that's in nice and tight. Obviously the seats aren't going anywhere. Um, so once that's in, the seat goes back. Now I was looking everywhere for like a way uh, to get the, um, uh, the power cable through. However, uh, so you remove this one. This one goes here like this, you just pull that off, it's just for clips. Uh, as you can see, none of mine are broken, so that's nice. Uh, this comes off too. Uh, this one is just underneath here, kind of like that with three of these little T-clips. So you just pop the top off and they slide out nice and easy. And you can see that cable's going all the way underneath there. Uh, let me see if I can get around the pedals. Oh, this is frustrating. Uh, I don't know if you can see, it goes up there and there's a rubber bong. Um, I'll see if I can post a, uh, a picture in here that I found on one of the forums. Uh, but that, when you post that through, that comes up really nicely through here. Uh, you can't see it, but because I've already routed it all the way along, uh, I've took the wire down here, you can see it's down uh, down that bit there, uh, popped it through this side, um, ran it around there, and it's uh, now nicely tucked up under the power cable. Um, now, this is one of those like time will tell kind of things, uh, because I was told uh, and the instructions seem to say that when you're running it through this way and you're connecting it to the uh, the speakers and you're not using it the amplifier way, um, you do not need to use this blue cable, which is the remote wire. Now, I, start, I said at the start of the video, uh, this is for um, the subwoofer to recognize like when there's power coming in or when there's power not coming in uh, so it doesn't drain your battery. Uh, this is gonna be one of those things, so I'm gonna leave it overnight. Uh, and hopefully uh, everything goes off. But obviously because like the lights come on and all that sort of stuff in here, you can see this has still got power. Um, so I'm hoping that when I lock the car and everything that goes off. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna route that yellow cable, the power cable, uh, wrap everything up neatly and we'll test it. 
So there we are, all rooted away. Uh, as you can see, this is still lit down there. Uh, but cables down here, there's just this very small one that you can see there. That obviously goes to the back speaker. And then if we go around, this is all rooted in now. Under here, you can barely even see anything. Uh, so the way that I've rooted this one uh, is, let me see if I can turn the torch on. There we go. So I uh, brought it along up here, tucked it across there, tucked it down here. Uh, you can see a small bit of the wire there. Uh, you can't see that from above. Uh, but I pulled this trim back so that there's a little tab that I can tuck it over the top of, then ran it around the center console. And I haven't done an amazing job. You can still see it, but uh, that'll be done soon. Um, I just need to give the car a big clean. As you can see, it's filthy. Um, but yeah, now I've got that all sorted, uh, give it a test run. So in answer to the question that I left this on, uh, yes, it does turn itself off with the engine. Um, so really impressed with that. It seems like it's all built into the cable, so I didn't have to worry about plumbing the, uh, the blue cable into the radio. That's all done fine. Um, I think that's different if you are using the different cables that I showed you in the box, but forget about that for now. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how it sounds. Everything works really well. Um, I've got some non-copyright sounds that I'm going to put on now, uh, just to sort of showcase the, uh, the music, uh, how it sounds. It's a very full sounding uh, system actually, um, and obviously I spoke about it before. Uh, the front speakers that I've got in here, um, they were just fairly cheap, they were like £40 for uh, the two front speakers and the two tweeters, and then the rear ones were £80. Um, so like, they're not super expensive, they're like, no nope, mid-range um, but I will show you uh, on here just before I start this is the audio settings uh, so it's just on user uh, loudness is on bass is up to three travels minus two obviously that depends on what your system is but because the rear one uh, the rear speakers that I have are a little bit more expensive than uh, the um, the front ones um, I've got more power going to the rear ones so that there's less distortion and everything and it seems to work really well um, so press play I'll play this. This is a uh, cartoon Why We Lose, uh, non copyright sound, of course. But I'm really happy, so I'll let you listen. So, and with that, please leave a like, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, whatever you want, uh, as long as uh, it's helped you in some sort of way, whether it's to decide if this is the subwoofer that you want, or how to fit it in the DS3, uh, maybe using a different setup, whatever. Hope it's helped, and see you in the next one.